Hi, I'm George, and this video about video compression is sponsored by WinX HD Video Converter Deluxe. And at the end of this video, I'll tell you how you can get your own copy of WinX HD Video Converter Deluxe for free. Now, videos make for very large file sizes, and frequently they are too large to use, so we often have to reduce the file size to make it usable. Now, contrary to popular opinion, you can't reduce the file size without losing something. There's going to be some kind of loss someplace. The trick is to use a technique that minimizes the apparent loss of quality so that it's not or hardly not noticeable. Here are some of the reasons why you may need to reduce your file size. It may be too large to upload to the service that you're using. For instance, TikTok uses fairly small file sizes up to 500 megabits, but of course, those are very short videos as well, so editing could be all you need. YouTube, on the other hand, can handle very large video sizes up to 128 gigabits, but a file that size may take forever to load up to the YouTube servers. Likewise, Instagram and Facebook both have a limit of 4 gigabits, and Twitter has a limit of 512 megabits. Again, very small limit. If you want to send a video by email, it will need to be a very small file size, frequently less than 10 to 25 megabits. Keep in mind when you're thinking about using very high resolution videos that it really depends upon your audience. 4K videos, for instance, are basically wasted on an audience that primarily uses smartphones. But it's ideal for an audience that is watching on a large computer monitor or broadcasting to a large flat screen TV. So doing 4K prank videos would be a waste of your resources, but doing a 4K nature documentary would be ideal. Here's some things that contribute to video file sizes. The first one, of course, is going to be your image size. Right now, the default on YouTube is 1080p, which is, you can call that 1K if you want to. 4K is four times that size. The video bitrate also has an effect. By changing this, will have a minor effect on the file size, but could have a major effect on the quality. So I recommend staying away from video bitrate pretty much. There are a few things you can do on that one. Same thing for audio bitrate. Videos are in two parts, and they're each handled separately, which means you can set different bit rates for your audio and for your video. Now, the codec that the video is compressed with also is going to have a big effect on the file size, your final file size. So it's a good idea to always use a codec that does a good job with compression. That's going to be your more current codecs. And some good ones are H.264 and H.265, AV1 and VVC. The most common in use right now is H.264, so we'll be sticking with that one because it's the most compatible right now with video players and online sites. Now, the length of the video also has a big impact on the size. Obviously, the longer the video, the larger the file size. So you can correct that by editing your video down to a shorter length. Video frame rate also can have an effect. The higher the frame rate, the larger the video size because you have more frames. Let's say you have 30 frames per second. That's going to be a larger file size than 24 frames per second. Right now, TV and film are at 24 frames per second. YouTube and most online sites are at 30 frames per second. High definition can be as high as 60 frames per second. But again, it's going to dramatically increase your file size if you do that. Aspect ratio can also have an effect on video file size, but this needs to match where you're going to be using your video. Now, some have an option on there on the size you want to use. For YouTube, the standard size is a horizontal format at 16 by 9. YouTube Shorts is a vertical format at 9 by 16, and that's the same format used for TikTok. You'll also find the vertical format over on Instagram, the same 9 by 16. But if you make that square, let's just call it 9 by 9, that's going to be a smaller file size than a 9 by 16. So sometimes you have a choice on which way you want to go depending upon what your content is. But basically I would set the aspect ratio for what your audience wants to see as opposed to worrying about this as one of the things to check for your file size. Let's now see how WinX HD Video Converter Deluxe can be used to lower the file size of very large video files. We'll first load something in here, go up to the video button right there. And there we go. I'll just bring this in and we'll load that in. Now, if I bring up the folder for that, you'll see here this has a current file size of 229 megabits. Not huge, but it's also not a small file. Okay, now when we take a look at this, the first thing we see is our output profile. So let's examine the profile we have up here. Now, this is in an AVI profile right there, and the current size is 2720 by 1530. A couple of things that we can adjust here to bring down our file size. This is basically a 4K video. So first thing I'll do is to decide how I want to convert this over. And I want to bring this over to MP4 video, which is right here. I can go up to 4K. This has a default resolution of 3840 by 2160, which is larger than our file size. This would actually make the file size bigger. So we'll stick here at the MP4 video format. On the right-hand side, you can go for a quality setting in here, lower quality or higher quality. I'll leave this at the default. That's usually a very good compromise in here. So that's all looking fine. Our basic settings are looking good. Let's choose OK. We can check our info right down over here. 
And notice our ratio here is 16 by 9. And the frame rate is 29 by 97, basically a 30 frames per second frame rate. So that's all fine. Notice so the audio is separate from the video. So they're actually handled separately. At this one, we can trim the video down to make it a shorter video, thereby saving us some time. Just click on that trim button right there. I'll just pause that. And right here, we can come in and crop or expand the image to a larger or smaller size. Enable crop right down here. If you bring it down in the crop size here, this will again make this a smaller video size. Or we can trim the video, do enable trim in here. And we have these little handles right there. I can come in and adjust those handles and only use just part of the video. And that will then also make it a smaller video size. Then come down and wait for an ending spot in here. Let it play just a little bit. And that's a pretty good spot right there. I'll pause it at that point and I'll bring this in. And this will then just use this piece of the video. It will then trim off the beginning and the end part of that video and use just this section. They were making for a smaller file size. Now for your right hand side, a couple things you can do over here. Click on this button right here, and this then brings this window back up again, so I could come back in and change to a different profile if I wanted to. And there are a lot to choose from. We have general profiles right down here, and device specific profiles left hand side. If I scroll down here, here's our YouTube video size right there. There's a Facebook video options in here. So you can adjust the size to match a specific output need. Let's just go for our YouTube video. And that's that same MP4. Choose OK. And then right over here, last option. In here, we can change our output profile. Again, this brings this back up again. We can change our video codec. And the MP4 uses the H264, which is why I'm using that. Here's our frame rate. That's fine. I normally don't recommend changing your frame rate. Resolution, I can bring my resolution down if I wanted to. I can come down to 1280 by 720. That's your 720p right here. And here's where we can change that aspect ratio. Again, I'll leave this at the default aspect ratio. Now on the bitrate over here, notice what we're looking at, video options. You can set this for VBR, which is your variable bitrate. And this allows the codec to try to find the best bitrate for your output. And then down here, your audio options. Again, you can choose different audio options in here depending upon what you need. Audio is actually more important than video for people liking the video. So I'll leave this one alone. And there we go, I'll just leave all that set. Right hand side over here, it's a good idea to have the hardware accelerator checked. This will increase the speed of the transcoding. Also, if you want to keep as much quality as possible, use the high quality engine right there. Now, if you're using the same codec, which we're not, you could do auto copy. Because I'm using a different codec, the auto copy is not going to be working for us. And then when you're happy with everything, just click on run, and it's then going to do that conversion to your new settings. Let's go ahead, we'll click on run in here, and we'll see how long this takes. Now, again, it's about a one minute clip. I cut the duration down to 29 seconds, so it's just a little bit shorter. And we'll see how that goes. There we go, that is now finished. Choose OK. And there is the finished video right here. And see so what our file size is. It's now down to 45.3 megs, down from 229 megs. So doing a bit of editing, that's probably most of the size reduction. But that'd be about half. We took off about half of the video time. So I would take it down to about 110 megs and then converting over to the MP4 and making some of those adjustments, brought it down another 50% on top of that. Now, as you saw, there are a lot of things to do here to compress the image size and the file size. And I was going for a smaller file size specifically. So in reality, you may not be able to trim off as much as I did or you may have to use a different resolution. So you might be limited on some of your options, but simply choose the options that are best for your particular circumstance for that particular video. And this will then do a real good job at giving you a high quality output for that. The final part of that whole process, of course, is the software that you're doing this conversion for, this transcoding for, has to have a good high quality engine to be able to give you the best result when you're doing this kind of video compression. And that's why I'm using the high quality engine right down here for the best possible quality output. If you want to find out more about how to do this kind of video compression, there's a whole article that Winx HD Video Converter has up on their website. And I'll put a link for that right down there in the description. You also can download this program for free and there's a link for that on that same page. And I'll see you next time.